Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for the music, special music, all the worship. I went to my uh, little grandson's first basketball game, his first basketball game ever played in, and uh, he doesn't know anything about basketball. (laughs) But I enjoyed watching him, and he'll learn if he likes it. I told him, told to my son yesterday, I said, if he likes it, he'll, he'll pick up on it, he'll learn. So he looked like he was having fun, so I expect he'll learn some things. Sometimes he would take off without dribbling. I guess I, this is being filmed, so they may watch it. I don't want to say too much. I, I, I really enjoyed watching him. I'll go back next week and watch him again and uh, again and again. Uh, little, little kids and... Uh, and uh, they, they're just learning basketball. Jonathan said Owen was worried that uh, he didn't know where he was supposed to be out there. And I remember that feeling. I didn't, uh, take, I didn't really take up basketball until, you know, on the playground when I was probably, but we didn't have anything like today. I'm about, probably about sixth grade, I realized that I could stand under there and rebound. Nobody else could even get close to what I could get. And, and so... I could uh, rebound a basketball, and that's about the only way you get a shot is to rebound it and go out and take your own shot. Nobody would pass it to you. <clears throat> Just a bunch of selfish ball hogs, you know. On the... <laughs> so in order to get a shot, you had to rebound it and take it out yourself and shoot it. But then I fell, I really fell in love with basketball. I loved basketball, and then, but, I, but, you know, I didn't have much... Uh, uh, and the first organized practice I ever had was uh, probably that next year uh, in the summer, and there was a new coach in or- Orleans by the name of Glenn Butt, and he actually played on the Miracle Milan team. He was one of their players, and if you see a composite picture of that, uh, of that uh, team, then you will see him. I think he lives over at Batesville. I believe he's still alive. I liked him a lot, but he he coached a, like a summer basketball program, and it was downtown, and we don't know why they didn't go to the gym, but we went downtown and played on an outside court, and I have a vivid memory of this because I was just scared to death. He put me in the game, and he told me to play forward, and he might as well have told me some kind of a mathematical equation that would have eluded uh, me at that point, and... Uh, I didn't know what that was. And so I would run out there thinking, wonder where a forward's supposed to be. <laughs> I gotta hurry up with this because you don't wanna be here all day. But uh, one thing I learned back uh, in uh, probably the junior high, seventh, eighth grade is that they had what they called a 10 second line. And I understood that 10 second line was the mid court line and a basketball court has lines on it. And when you inbound the ball to a touch, you got 10 seconds to get it across that line. Now, IU played Illinois on Thursday night. On consecutive trips up the floor, they got, they had 10 second violations. I thought the coach would surely come unglued that they did not advance the ball in 10 seconds over the, they were getting pressure, sure enough, but you got to get the ball across or you give it back to the opposition. So throughout basketball, whatever level you're playing, there's a clock against you. In college, they have a shot clock. In the NBA, they have a shorter shot clock. So time management always is really crucial in sports. Uh, I went to a high school game. Several people asked me to go, and I wanted to go, watch the North Davies team play Linton, and we went down to North Davies the other night. I tell you, two really good teams, two really good teams, and they compete, they play hard. And uh, they're smart, and they're good ball players. And part of what goes into a good basketball team is clock management and time management. And at the end of the game, Dort Davies was in a situation where they had a chance to win. Now, I don't remember. You, you probably were there. You remember exactly, but 2.4 seconds maybe on the clock. And they had inbound it, the other end line, advanced the ball all the way up for a shot, and I believe it was 2.4 
So when that ball comes in and somebody touches it, the clock is supposed to start if you've got an honest clock guy. And uh, they, had a, they had a really good play design, and they got, their ball, they got their ball just, you know, across half court. It was a long shot, but he, he had the shot, and he was open, and he, he missed the shot, or they would have won the game. But uh, an excellent play for 2.4 seconds or whatever. I'm just saying it was, wasn't very much time. And uh, then you think about the football games that are being played. And if you're a football fan, and they say that's one of the, the, the number one sport for people to watch, and you may hate football, but there are a lot of other people that like it, so get used to it. <laughs> and... Uh, and every, I don't know that a week would go by or a game would go by where somebody wasn't critical of clock management. Now, that could be the quarterback, and that could be an offensive coordinator or a head coach, but somebody is critical of time or clock management almost every game. And if you watch the Colts at all this year, you know they had a hard time with clock management sometimes. And they caught a lot of heat over that at time. Uh, just, uh, it doesn't mean anything. It's of no consequence to the sermon, but I, I kind of like to say it. I think Peyton Manning was absolutely the greatest <laughs> at managing the clock. Now, I got a few Peyton Manning fans. He was extraordinary. Uh, when, uh, when it, man, you put the ball in his hands to win a game, and it's amazing how he could do it. Well, I better quit. I'll quit on all that. Guess what I want to talk to you today about? Time management. <laughs> Time management. James 4, 14 in the New Living Translation, it says, How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, and then it's gone. And then it's gone, just like a morning fog, a vapor, here and then gone, suddenly gone. Psalm 39, verses 4 through 5, 4 and 5, out of, again out of the New Living Translation, Psalm 39, 4 and 5, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. I'll stop right there and tell you that's why I'm here today. Continuing, it says, remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. Verse 5 is an interesting verse. We can all take a look at this verse and do a little self, uh, I guess, uh, soul searching. But it says, you have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. Just a breath. Then you hold your hand up, hold your hand up, look at it. And that's what God says the expanse of your life is. It's like the width of your hand. That's not very much, is it? That's what he said in his word. Billy Graham, uh, I appreciated the life of Billy Graham. He stirred my heart a number of times. I listened to him as a boy and as an adult. I appreciate the message of the gospel that he preached. He had his critics, still has critics, but uh, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I believe was responsible for leading a lot of people to the Lord in salvation. Billy Graham was asked what he was most surprised by in his life. Toward the end of his life, he was asked that question, and he answered it quickly. He said, it's brevity. It's brevity. That was what he was most surprised by in life. He was surprised by the shortness of life. Well, the truth is we don't know how much time we have left. And we have no guarantee of just one more day. And because of time, we must, we must establish priorities. And your list of priorities will determine how you live. And that's a fact. Your decisions. Someone said your decisions, you make decisions, your decisions make you. Probably not a bad quote. 
your scheduling. And my, my question that we're here in the beginning of a new year and you've got calendars, you've got new calendars, and you're putting things on your calendars now as far as appointments, and uh, your schedule, I'm just asking, is, is God anywhere on your calendar? Is God on your list? This new year stretches out in front of us. And we're getting things on our calendar. The opportunities we have, the commitments we have. I just want to say, make sure God gets on your calendar. Time is something we manage, they say. We make commitments and with our time and we have to decide what is urgent and we have to decide what's important and we have to decide and establish priorities. And I don't know if you've done it recently, but I do it routinely because I need to. I make a list of uh, my commitments and they are a visual reminder uh, of all that I might be involved in for a coming week or a month or so. And I believe God is urging us to make the most of our time. I, I believe that He gives us uh, a certain amount of time. But, you know, He knows the number of our days before one of them came to be, it says in the Scripture. So He knows what we have. A.W. Tozer wrote this, Time is a resource that is non-renewable and non-transferable. I can't give you some of my time, I mean, as far as adding to your time, we, we, all, get, we all get 24 hours, right? And then uh, you guys that do math, is that 168 hours in a week? And, and if it's not, please correct, some, correct me down the road. Tell Christy about it. She'll let me know. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, we all get the same amount of time, right? And I can't you know, in certain workplaces, maybe if you get sick, somebody can transfer their hours to yours and you can continue to get paid. And that seems like a great thing to me. That's really generous. Somebody could give part of their hours to you, but we can't do that in our lives. You can't store it. You can't slow it up. You can't hold it up. You can't divide it up or give it up. You can't hoard it up or save it for a rainy day because when it's lost, it's unrecoverable, he said. And he said, when you kill time, and that was Billy Woods, one of Billy Woods' favorite saying, I asked Billy, what are you doing today? And he said, I'm just killing time. Well, when you kill time, he says, remember, there is no resurrection. That's a pretty good reminder, isn't it? And then uh, I copied this. There's an entire, entire field of study called time management. In almost every business in America, consultants are hired to teach busy executives how to better manage their time. Time management it remains a hot topic. In his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, Stephen Covey writes, Time management is a misleading concept. You can't really manage time. You can't delay it. You can't speed it up. You can't save it or lose it. No matter what you do, Time keeps moving forward at the same rate. The challenge is not to manage time, but to manage ourselves. That's, that is wisdom, isn't it? We have to manage ourselves. Years ago, uh, boy, it's been over 30 years, uh, I was listening to Adrian Rogers some. My brother actually attended that church at Bellevue at one time. We actually got a visit there a couple of times probably, and and, but that's been years ago, and since then, Adrian Rogers has passed on, but they still play some messages on TV, just like he's alive. Love worth finding. He was a master preacher. Preacher. He was, a, he was an amazing communicator to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, I heard a sermon, and it stuck with me through the years, and I jotted down some of those things that I heard that day, and I've tried to pass them on to others through the years. It was a message that ministered to my heart, and he used uh, Ephesians 5, uh, about three or four verses there in Ephesians 5. And we'll, we'll turn over there and look at verses 14 and down through 18. And just let the Lord speak to your heart. It says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 
See then that you walk circumspectly, and that means carefully, that means cautiously. It says not as fools, but as wise, so you see the contrast. Circumspectly falls in the realm of walking wisely or cautiously, carefully. And then there's an interesting verse, and it's always changed in your other translation, but in the King James it says, redeeming the time. And there are, are different schools of thought on exactly what that means, redeeming the time. I personally believe that it has to do with seizing the opportunities that are before us. It's hard to go back, but redeeming the time, you take advantage of the situations that God puts you in. And he says, because the days are evil, you must redeem the time. Use the time most effectively for the glory of the Lord. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled, say it with me, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. And so he, he always preached, and you could easily outline what he, what, he, what he said when he preached, and you could listen to him today. I'm sure you could YouTube or whatever you wanted to see if you wanted to listen to Adrian Rogers and hear his amazing, magnificent voice and, and uh, how he preached. But uh, he said, time is a provided opportunity. He said it's a gift of God. I don't know if you think about it like that or not, but start thinking about it like that. Start thinking about understanding that Time, the time that God gives us is a gift to us. Our heart is still beating. Minds are still partially functioning at least. And uh, it's because of God's grace and His mercy to us. It's a provided opportunity. He also said it was a present opportunity. He said yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. He said today's a gift. That's why they call it the present. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. He said two days steal the strength and productivity from today. Yesterday, where Paul said in Philippians 3 that we should forget those things which are behind, which we talked about a couple weeks ago, and trying to let loose of that past guilt and past grief, past suffering, even past, I don't know if we talk about it much, but even your past successes, your past glory, you got to let it go and especially those past grudges, those you got to offer forgiveness. You just can't afford to do that any longer. Yesterday, two days, steal the strength and productivity of today. One of them is yesterday, and the other one is tomorrow. And a lot of people worry about, worry themselves sick about tomorrow. And it takes the strength out of today. It pulls tomorrow clouds, he said, over today's sunshine. And Jesus said in Matthew 6, 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Have you found that to be true? Each day. So live today. Live in the moment. Redeem the time. Adrian Rogers said every day God allows us enough difficulty to bring us to himself. And that was to receive enough grace to live as we ought. One day at a time. A wise man of God. Deuteronomy 33, 25 says, at the end of the verse, as thy day, so shall thy strength be. In other words, in the NIV it says, your strength will equal your days. And God can give you the strength you need for today. And so the next thing on his list was that not only a provided opportunity but and a present opportunity, but it is a precious, precious thing. Understand its value. Understand the value of time. Psalm 90, verse 12, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Psalm 90, verse 12, teach us to number our days. You need to treasure time as a valuable commodity. The fourth thing was that it's passing. It's passing away. Again, you can't save it or borrow it or loan it. Or you, someone said you use it or you lose it. And going back to my opening on clock management and time management, 
I noticed in the ball game at North Davies the other night, there were some strategic timeouts taken. They were important timeouts taken. Now, that's another thing that's arguable, or a lot of people believe that certain timeout, timeouts should be taken. But you don't get a chance to call timeout in life. You may in a ball game, but you really don't in life. I know you parents, some of you like to give timeouts to your kids, but I don't know about all that. I won't, I won't get an argument with you over it. But they, they should be disciplined, that's for sure. Four principles uh, about time that he gave. I liked them all. First one was the prayer principle. And that was that we begin each day and each morning with prayer. We begin our day by gazing upon God. It's not a bad way to end your day either. Because we need to have an understanding of His will. And the way we get, uh, I believe one of the ways that we access God's will is through prayer. Through His Word, through prayer, combine the both. The priority principle means that there are choices that uh, have to be made. And there's choices between good and bad. But then there's also the choice between the good and the best. And uh, that's, that's where it may be a little more difficult. Uh, what is it that we will do? I think God wants you to choose the best things. Jesus said in John 17, 4, I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. How many of us? Well, the Apostle Paul said, I finished my course. I've kept the faith. And so it's possible, Jesus showed us and Paul showed us, that it's possible for us to fulfill our life assignment that God would might give us. Sadly, a lot of people never try to determine what their life assignment is. Well, it's an important day, not only when you were born, but it's an important day for you to discover why you were born. That's an old Mark Twain principle, I think. And I don't even know if he was a believer or not. There's a promptness, promptness principle that Adrian Rogers spoke of. He talked about the sin of procrastination versus instant obedience. It, it's failing to do in the moment what you should do. He, little, he gave a little ditty, a little poem in his message that I heard there 30 some years ago. He said, when you have a job to do, begin this very hour. You suppl supply the will, God will supply the power. <laughs> and that fourth thing that he talked about in this, uh, the principles of time is the power principle, which is, the 18th verse, which was our final verse in Ephesians 5, and it tells us to be filled with the Spirit. And to be filled with the Spirit is to be filled with His power. Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Clothed with power from on high, Luke 24, 49. Wait, wait till you be clothed with power from on high. So if you're going to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, you need the Holy Spirit and you got to have to, you need to welcome the power of the Holy Spirit into your life. Sometimes people will say, I need to buy some time. Well, you just can't, no matter how wealthy you are. Now that deal about, I need to make a little time. Well, you can, but maybe you need to make more than a little you can make time for things in your life. My mom said that. My mom, she would tell us that people take time for the things that are important to them. Someone says, I need to make up for lost time. Well, I don't know if we can actually do that, but I think we should do better than we've done. Our track record probably behooves us to do better with our time. One of the most aggravating things must be for God, for us down here to say, oh, I just don't have time. Oh, and he must be thinking, oh, really? I don't just have, I don't have time. I don't, I don't have time to, I don't have time for that in my life. I'm glad my, I'm glad my wife's religious. I'm glad that she does what she does, but I don't have time. I'm trying to raise a family here. Yeah, my mom, you can quote my mom. You have time for the things that are important to you. Yeah, that's what she said. God should be important to you. He should be at the top of your list. There's a lot of demands on your time. I don't mean to make light of that. I know that, you know, who's not overbooked and who's not overscheduled and who's not overcommitted. And 
I don't know how your staff is, if they schedule appointments or they just come into your, but sometimes it gets pretty busy there, doesn't it? Trying to take care of everybody. And that's the way life is. And so a lot of people, man, they are moving forward. They eat fast, they talk fast, they walk fast. They're in a hurry. Trying to, trying to, trying to get it all in. Well, I just, I, I don't want to just beat this horse to death today, but make good use of your time. And I think the good use of your time is, uh, is that God will help you make those decisions. And use your opportunities for His glory and for your sake and for everybody's sake. Don't waste your time. What a gift God's given us with time. Make sure you do establish some priorities. What is most important? I'm not saying you'll get it right, but at least be confronted with it in your own mind. What is the most important thing in my life? And then you know, you know as well as I do that you can't do everything. You just don't have time to do everything. So God will help you. In the King James, what is your life? Well, it's just a vapor that appeareth for a little while, say a little while, and then vanishes away. I made a list one time or somebody else spoke it into my life, but I remember I wrote it down somewhere along the way years ago. And uh, it was about taking time. Taking time to do about five things. Pretty good list, I think. It's helped me in my life. I hope it'll help you. Uh, Take time to listen. Take time to learn. Take time to laugh, which I learned from my family a lot. Take time to lift. Take time to love. You put all those things into living a life for the glory of the Lord. Take time to listen. First of all, make sure you're listening to God. And then don't forget that there are others that need your ear. You need to be able to listen to others. That's a, that's a difficult task for a lot of people. And even when they act like they're listening, they're not really listening. They're just getting ready to give you something back. They're looking for an opening. Everyone needs someone to listen at times, and listening can bring encouragement to someone else, and sometimes uh, problems can be solved, and sometimes there's comfort and there's healing. I pray for your sister just now in the name of Jesus. You told me she got moved. I, I just pray that God's favor would continue upon her. In the name of Jesus. It's Carrie, isn't it? K E R R. God's brought her a long ways. Yeah. A lot of prayer. God has been faithful. Take time to listen. Take time for Jesus. Take time for the Holy Spirit. Take time to learn. Remember, this is the greatest text greatest book you'll ever resource. This will be your greatest resource in life. Some, who was that that said every baby should have one of these taped to the manufacturer's handbook? <laughs> well, it, it serves you well in life to know God's Word. So take time to learn. Learn from God's Word. Read, read the Scriptures. And there, I'm not saying there's not other ways to learn, and there certainly is. There's other things that you need to learn, and and we'll need to learn for your career or vocation. But the greatest thing you'll ever learn are these truths from God's Word. These are things that will last forever. So you'll need to study. And God will teach you. You know, being a disciple of Jesus, that's what that, that means, a learner of Jesus. And He wants to teach you. And the Holy Spirit said, Come, my people, and I will teach you. Come, my people, and I will teach you third one was take time to laugh I tell you there's nothing like laughing that dresses up life life can get so drab can it and so dreary and just laughing a little and if you say well I don't have anything to laugh about well do what's other people do laugh at yourself I mean that's what they do they laugh at us so we might as well join them 
We can rejoice. And I, I know that's, that's a little crude, but we can rejoice in the Lord. You say, I don't have anything to rejoice in. You are absolutely wrong. God's Word says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And then, fourthly, take time to lift someone else's burden. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to shoulder each other's burdens. And if I can help take the weight off of you, then that's what I need to do as a brother or sister, your brother or sister in Christ. I need to help that. We are to bear one another's burdens. Does that sound familiar? So we need to lift. Who can we reach for? Who is it that God wants us to help? And then take time to love. It can be in your countenance. It can be in your eyes. It can be in your smile. It can be a kind word. It can be a helping hand. It can be sharing Christ. It can just be being considerate would go a long ways to uh, showing someone love. And I'll, let's start, start at home. So I already made some kind of a terrible comment because I heard it was from your reaction that <laughs> earlier. I could, I could be a little more considerate, couldn't I? Come on, so there's your chance to say amen real loud. I know you're saying poor Christy. You could be more considerate to your wife. You could be more considerate to your husband. <laughs> we could be concerned we could cooperate. How about that one? We could be cooperative and we could be more Christ-like. How many of you want to be more like Jesus? You could love someone with all your heart. You could love somebody on purpose with God's help. You could just love somebody. I've, I've, I've written this out a number of times. I, I say it often, routinely, when I think I'm about throwing in the towel, I'll, 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 I'll look at this and... And rewrite it. And this is really what I believe, although sometimes it's, you know, it's assaulted. But I've got, I've got it written down and I wrote it down like I meant it. And I'll speak it like I mean it. If I had my life to live over, I would give it to God and do my best for Him. If I had a thousand lives to live, I would give them all to Jesus. I want to use the time that God has for me, whatever's left. It might be days, it might be months, it might give me a few more years. I don't know. But whatever it is, I want to do my best for Jesus. Make your life count every day. Live well every day. Fulfill your purpose. And give glory to Almighty God. In Jesus' name, can everyone say amen? Amen. amen. Thank you for coming and listening today. We're going to have a song and we're also going to have a altar if i haven't preached way past noon i'm going to you 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 thought about staying home today because a lot of people did stay home and i know many of you others thought about well should we go or not so you came and it's got we got 12 minutes till noon and what if uh what if we all made a commitment to use our time better to honor the lord uh you may want to come and pray about that. You may want somebody to pray with you or pray for you about a, a fresh new commitment. With this year ahead of you, you're going to say, I'm going to get God on my calendar. I want, I want God to be at the head of my life. I want Him to be at the center of my life. I want to put Him first. If you want to make a commitment like that, there may be somebody here that's never given their life to Jesus. Well, you don't need to go one more step into this new year without Jesus. You need Jesus. You need to welcome Him into your heart. You need to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. If you'd like to do that, you can come, come up here to the altar. There'll be some people up here that will pray with you and pray for you. I'm reaching for your heart today. I'm reaching for your commitment today. I, I do this on behalf of the one who sent me. And so would you respond to His call? I'm not sure exactly how He calls you in particular, but I feel in my heart he does call you today and you need to respond it may just be as simple as lord i can i can do better with your help i know i can do better with your help i will do better with my life in jesus name amen